today's project, we're going to create a pattern bar. Pattern bars could be made in different ways. And the way that I'll be making mine is to make this big kind of log of glass with a predetermined design that I've chosen. And then that glass is cut into little slices like this. And then these slices are used in the project. And my final design for this is this dish. So you'll see I put multiple pattern bars here and then just solid pieces of glass over here. This project took me a really long time to make. Uh, there was a lot of, it was the first time making a pattern bar. Um, actually the second time and you'll see my lessons learned from my, the first pattern bar I make in this project. So there's a lot of information and a lot of tips or you can you can basically learn from my mistakes in this project. And I hope I hope you enjoy it and let's start this project. The pattern bar that I show you in this project is just one example of the different pattern bars that you can make while using glass. So this one is going to use exclusively some uh, different types of frit, but you could also use strips of glass. You can use um, scrap glass that you just kind of randomly put or, you know, the strips and stringers that you can put in a geometrical pattern. So pattern bar bars can be very, very versatile and they're a really great way to bring uh, a special element into any project. So I want my final dish to be 10 inches wide and 6 inches tall. So I have four the four colors that I've chosen for my my dish which are marigold yellow, plum striker, orange and red, tomato red. And I'm going to cut these in 2 inch strips which means that my pattern bar also needs to be 2 inches wide. So I have my dams and my papyrus on the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover my dams with papyrus as well, because we don't want um, the glass to stick to the dams. So I made the, the strips of papyrus a little longer so they could bend around the corners so we don't have bleeding. And I'm using my gel because that's what I have on hand. You could use white glue or whatnot. Um, just to put a dot so my papyrus stays in place while I put the dams in place. So I'm just measuring from edge to edge of my dams so that I make sure that they're two inches wide. Two inches apart to make a pattern bar that's two inches wide. I wanted uh, the pattern bar to show something a little funkier and this is the first time I try it so we'll see how it comes out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer some um, clear coarse frit and then some uh, medium frit that's colored and the colors that I have I am actually lucky because I have three colors that match exactly the the solids that I have the solid colors so plum striker orange and tomato red I don't have marigold yellow the closest thing I have is butterscotch and it's in fine but it is what it is. So I'm going to be layering some clear coarse frit and then in a chunky layer and then a colored layer, a clear layer colored, etc. And it should give us like this wavy kind of effect.
I'm tapping them down a bit so that this top surface won't be too uneven and so that I don't have a lot of gaps so that we don't get a lot of bubbles inside. So I have no idea how this is going to come out. Hopefully it comes out nicely because, well, this is a lot of glass. <laughs> um, but then this can be used for more than one project. So, And I'm not going to be taking this to a casting temperature, but to a full fuse. So there's more texture on the inside. So we'll see how that ends up. So this is the pattern bar out of the kiln and it's like unboxing a Christmas gift. I already like how the top looks. Ugh. This is pretty. So we can't really see what it's going to look like yet until we really slice into it. But I just love it already. So I'm very excited to cut into this and show you what it looks like. So the first step to cut this pattern bar is going to be to square off these edges. You'll see the, the bottom is going to be at right angles, but the top over here is very rounded. And if I were to just cut slices of these, of this, they would come out like this. So very straight bottom and a rounded top because when it was fusing, it pushed into these corners in our, our mold or to the edges of our dams. So that's why you have the sharp edges on the bottom, but the rounded edges on top. When I set this up, I had intended on this being two inches wide and each one of these colors to be two inches wide as well to come up with a 10 inch wide dish. Now this is going to be a little narrower than 10 inches. And I'll decide when the time comes whether I do these as two inches and this, uh, it'll probably be something around like one and three quarters of an inch. And would I redistribute the size into these pieces or not? Um, so I should have accounted for this when I set my, uh, my dams up but the problem is is I hadn't cut into um, this other pattern bar this was my first pattern bar this is my second pattern bar so I hadn't accounted for these edges and what happens if you keep these rounded edges I mean they're nice but then you put two pattern bars on top or this way or this way you always end up with a gap. So what I did with the dish that I made using this pattern bar is that I, I put them like this and I filled these gaps up with some frit, which is fine. But with this pattern bar, I'd rather just square off the edges and just have some clean rectangles instead. Safety first. Here, I'm using safety glasses and gloves in case any glass shards come flying off while I'm cutting. I'm using a wet saw to square off the edges of my pattern bar and to cut my slices. I use a wet saw because the water lubricates the glass and helps with the cutting. The water also keeps the glass cool as it's being cut. Another advantage of using a wet saw is that the water prevents the glass powder that's being produced when the pieces are cut from floating into the air and going into my lungs.
rather than squaring off these sides, another lesson learned from my previous uh, attempt at making a pattern bar. So this is the pattern bar and I fused it. And you'll see, if I come up close, the haziness here and here and here. And this is not devitrification. Devitrification is a haziness at the surface of the glass, but this is actually haziness between pieces of glass because this was capped with a piece of clear, clear tecta. So what happened with this is when I, when I cut these using my wet saw, it, it gives this texture, right? which is the saw marks. If I had fused this without capping this, then it would have been fine because it's like it's like sanding it with uh, diamond pads, right? When you sand something with diamond pads, it gets this really matte texture. But because I capped it, it, it sandwiched these marks between the glass and the, the top. So here are my pieces and you see now they have the nice squared off edges. So if I put them one on top of the other, they fit relatively well, a lot better than they did without squaring off the edges. So I'm very happy with that. Let me show you the actual colors. So here's an extra piece I have. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to clear up the colors. And look how beautiful this came out. So because of all the frit, you have these nice organic little shapes in there. I really, really, really am happy with this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all these pieces that I've cut up and I'm going to put them in for a fire polish. And so now the surface will get all nice and shiny so that if I cap it with a piece of clear glass, it's not going to be an issue. So here are the pieces out of the kiln after I fire polished them and now they don't have that hazy look to them anymore. But before I I did put them in, I had a, a slight moment of hesitation that I wasn't sure that just fire polishing them would get rid of those marks. So I did use my diamond pads and I scrubbed them down starting, I went from a 60, 120, 200, and 400 diamond pad, and I smoothed them out. And just to make sure that all that work was not done for nothing, I put a couple of pieces that were um, control pieces, so pieces that uh, I wasn't going to use in my piece, but that I hadn't sanded either, just to see the difference. And you'll see this one was sanded, and this one was not. So there's m many more of those um, there are many more markings from the blade on this one than this one. So taking that extra time to sand them really helped out. So now these pieces are about one and three quarter inches and I made the executive decision. I'm not going to worry about it. My piece will be nine and three quarters of an inch because the other four pieces are going to be two inches wide each. I'm not going to bother with trying to redistribute that missing quarter of an inch. And so I made, I cut 10 of these just in case. And I think I only need eight because eight stacked on top of each other will give me a height of uh, six inches because they're each about three, quarter of a, three quarters of an inch tall. So, Ooh. so we'll, ha we'll have a nice long stack like this and then the colors going the other way, the solid colors. So I'm going to cut those now. So I put all my pattern pieces, pattern bar pieces, one after the other 
just to measure how long it was, how long they would be. And it gives me about um, just an eighth of an inch under six and a half. And I should have checked that before I cut my piece uh, to six inches. So now I have to cut a new piece. I could always take this off and make a piece that's like almost five and a half inches by nine and three quarters, but then I feel that it would be a little too narrow. So I'd rather just cut another piece and then make sure to cut all the other ones as well to the same size. Thankfully, I had only cut one of my pieces, not all of them. So let's try to put it all together. To remember that this purple is going to look like this once it's um, fired because it's a striker. So I've assembled all the pieces together and I cut a piece of clear tecta that measures the same height and width. But now if you see these pieces are not all the same thickness. So these pieces are three millimeter thick and then these new pieces these new pieces are about five millimeter thick so there's about a two millimeter difference between them so what i'm going to do so usually when you fire something and you want to make it uniform in one piece you would cap it with the piece of Tecta on top. And if I were to do that, I'd get a lot of bubbles because of the space in between the pieces. And it'll come out a bit wonky. I did it with another piece with my, my first um, piece where I used the pattern bars and you could see how uh, we have a bump here. And what I also did with this one is I put um, some clear, fine frit in between where the glass was thinner and it gave me all these champagne bubbles like way too many champagne bubbles and I don't want that to happen um, I could try to put two millimeter they make it into three pieces and put three millimeters here two millimeters here and three here or, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to fire this upside down, meaning I'm going to put the Tecta underneath and these pieces on top, and I'm going to put a dam all around this and then fire it that way. Once it's done, I'll take it out because the, the the clear tecta is going to be on the bottom, so it's going to be touching the the papyrus. It's going to come out with a more of a texture. It's not going to come out crystal clear. I'll take it out, flip it over, and um, put it in for a fire polish. So by putting the dam, it'll avoid also because this is the this part will be thicker than these parts. It'll avoid creating this bump and because I'm going to have to fire polish it regardless I might have some parts that I'm going to have to grind when it's done so that's fine so I'm going to clean these pieces off camera and I'll show you my setup with the dam once I've got it all done okay so I have my sides of my dam and uh, one eighth of an inch fiber paper so that um, 
my glass doesn't stick to my dams. You'll see inside under here, I have my Tecta on top of uh, a piece of papyrus and then all my pieces on top of that. So the, the dams will help prevent the glass from spreading because this part is thicker. And if you'll remember when I fire polished these, these were fire polished up this way. So this part is very shiny. And the bottom is where we had them on the papyrus. So it's, you know, a little, it's textured. So I'm making sure that my shiny side is facing down onto the clear piece of Tecta so that I don't have any cloudiness show up in between the pieces of glass. There we go. And if there's any gaps that are showing up, because the Tecta is underneath and because these pieces are actually thicker, they'll spread out and fill out any gaps. So like here, there's a bit of a gap and a little here in the corner. So it'll even itself out. So I'll take this to a full fuse. So here's the piece out of the kiln after it was fused with the dam around it. Um, there's some uneven parts like you'll see here. It's kind of sharp. Uh, we had the fiber paper around it um, and some some other parts here are sharp. This edge is a little sharp too. So it's and I knew I would have to take it to the grinder. So I had fused it, if you'll remember, with the clear glass on the bottom with the intention of then firing, fire polishing it this way because now, because we full fused it with uh, the clear glass on the bottom, the clear glass has this texture on it. And I was going to fire polish it this way so it is covered in the clear glass. But I'm actually liking how it came out on this side a little more because, because these pieces were thicker than the pieces that were around them. They kind of fused out, so they, they melted out, and they overlap here on the edges. And I really like the way that looks, like here. And there's some... I don't know what, and I'll use my diamond pad to get that out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grind these edges and give it a good scrub with um, my diamond pads and fire polish it this side up, not with the glass, the not with the clear tecta on top, but on the bottom. And then um, I'm going to slump it. Here's the piece after it came back out of the kiln after slumping. I forgot to film. I forgot to film what it looked like bef after I took it out for a fire polish before I put it in for slumping. But this video is long enough, so I'm sure <laughs> that you guys are okay with that. So I'm really pleased, except for this bubble here but there's not much I can do about it. I'm really really pleased with how this came out. I have this area here that's got the transparent tecta and made out of, well actually it was the clear frit here and all the matching colors that go with this uh, and you'll see the order going this way matches the order of the colors matches the order of the colors here. It was supposed to be done this way. So it would have been, you know, yellow, purple, orange, red. But since I ended up doing this way, this part is upside down. But that's okay. So I'm really, really happy 
how this came out. It took a really long time to finish this project. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a like and I'd love to hear your comments and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and that's the end of the project and I'll leave you with a few pictures.